Hello, welcome to The Conversation and New Central Television. This is the program where we bring you up to speed with all the political happenings on the African continent. I am Benga Aburoa. And I am Rita Omodia. Now, today on The Conversation, we'll be looking at situations in South Africa and also in Sudan. And South Africa is not planning to quit the International Criminal Court, ICC, as suggested earlier by President Sir Maposa. As Eliera Maposa had said, the African National Congress had decided to withdraw South Africa from the court, which last month issued an arrest warrant against Russian President Vladimir Putin. And later on the show, we will be discussing the ongoing unrest in Sudan's capital city, Khartoum, which has become a war zone due to the violent battle between two general citizens, a fleeing foreigners, have been evacuated from the city for the fear of their lives. Interesting developments. You have a situation. I mean, just looking at the South African situation, what happened in less than 24 hours? You know, I wonder because according <laughs> to the statement from the presidency, it says a communication error. So I don't know the speech they gave President Sir Maposa, what happened, or did he actually read what was in his mind? Uh, exactly. It's, I mean, it's more than a communication error. It's more it was, than that. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to resolve it, but you know, discussions so far have said that even though, or even if, they had yeah. decided to withdraw from the ICC. It would take months to do so. Exactly. So there's still a big question on the BRIC summit. Will Vladimir Putin actually attend? And if he will, will they be obligated to actually arrest Putin? Well, the, the EFF leader, Julius Malema, has offered his services to chauffeur him around and prevent anyone uh, from arresting him. Well, we'll but, see how that one pans okay. out. Okay. <laughs> and let's get to our first discussion of the day, which uh, South Africa's presidency had earlier reneged on its earlier statement announcing its position to pull out from the International Criminal Court President Sir Ramaphosa at a press briefing on Tuesday with visiting Finnish President Sauli Vainamo Nisto in the nation's capital of Pretoria told reporters that the governing African National Congress Party had felt it's prudent to withdraw from the ICC based on perceived bias sentiment and the manner in which cases were being handled at the courts. But in a twist of actions which seem to have caused an uphill of confusion, its office issued a contradictory statement clarifying that South Africa remains a signatory to the Rome Statute and will continue to campaign for equal and consistently consistent application of international law. Heated debates over membership of the ICC came to the fore since the ICC issued an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin in March over war crimes and his alleged role in the Russian abduction of Ukrainian children. Putin, on the other hand, has been invited to a summit in South Africa of the BRICS group and as Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa in August. And the Kremlin has said the Russian leader will take a decision nearer the time on whether he would attend. As a signatory to the Rome Statute, South Africa is required to detain him. And join us for this conversation. We have Temba Godi, President, African People's Convention. He joins us in South, from South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us on the conversation. Thanks very much for having me. All right. So before we get into the discussions, let's take a quick uh, step back and see how, uh, what exactly President Sir Maposa said and that did that caused quite an uphill of confusion yesterday. Let's have a review of what happened yesterday with President Sir Maposa. Yes, the governing party, the African National Congress, has taken that decision that uh, it is prudent that uh, South Africa should pull out of the ICC, largely because of the manner in which the ICC has been seen to be dealing with uh, uh, these types of problems. We want a uh, situation where there is a permanent ceasefire and that the conflict must be brought to an end and obviously uh, we will through the African Union be seeking to make uh, interventions uh, also through the regional body IGAD that that war uh, that conflict should come to an end the uh, war in Ukraine is one dividing element which uh, maybe not in itself divides, but it creates thinking around it uh, where many, many other things are uh, also involved uh, that, uh, that may actually grow us 
apart more. And those were comments that I was saying from the Finland president there. Uh, we also heard from South Africa's president, Sir Maposa, where he actually made the comment that they were withdrawing from the ICC. And we also have with us on the conversation, we have Simpo Senfe, is a political analyst. He joins us all the way from South Africa. Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the conversation. And I would like to start off first with Temba. So what do we make of this first comment made by the president on the party's position to withdraw from the ICC? Uh, we've seen different statements from uh, the ANC and even the presidency. But what led to this erroneous statement and can we totally blame it on communication error as claimed by the presidency? Yeah, I must say that uh, we are left confused and embarrassed uh, as a country because clearly it cannot be a slip of a tongue when the president uh, announces this in a press conference, but also when the same is said by the Secretary General uh, of the ruling party. Um, I, I would have expected that if there's a retraction, it must come from the party because this is a party decision. The presidential spokesperson is more a government function than a party function. What was being spoken about here was a decision of the party. And until the party in its own name issues a statement to say the SG and the president um, misspoke, uh, it's only then that we can have some sort of direction. But may I say that uh, the ANC uh, is a policy battleground uh, between those who want to pull to the left and those who want to pull to the right. And uh, this confusion that we're seeing today uh, is it, a reflection uh, of those kind of contradictions and complications uh, that exist uh, within that party. And um, we, we wait to see um, how they explain this themselves, because it just does not make sense. It just does not make mm -hmm. sense at all. Thank you, Tembe. I'd like to bring Sifo into the conversation. Sifo, South Africa began proceedings to leave the International Criminal Court in 2016 after a dispute over whether to arrest the former Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. But in early December, it was made known that the African National Congress and the South African government had resolved to rescind the withdrawal from the ICC. Can you take us through uh, some of the factors that led to this decision? and why the withdrawal was considered in the first place. Hello, Sifo, uh, that question is directed to you. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't get to the whole question. Okay, I'll repeat, I say first I'll, I'll repeat the question. Is that uh, it cannot be true that this was a miscommunication. Uh, as uh, Temba indicates, that it is not possible for both the president as well as the secretary general of the ANC to make the same mistake. The position of the ANC on this has been more confused. Although the position was taken in December that they, would, they were not going to withdraw out of the ICC. But what is most important to, to realize is that senior members of the ANC, like Gwene Mantashe, had been uh, making statements publicly to say, the ANC made a mistake by not withdrawing from the ICC. So you could actually see here that the ANC was caught up between having to please various masters. After they taken a position that there is no way that they can ar arrest uh, Putin, which is also a position of the alliance partners, they decided to take that position. But they, because we have a a president who also gets orders elsewhere. You mm -hmm. saw the presidency changing. So the changes come because there was pressure that is outside the ANC. But the ANC was very clear in its meeting. But the, all this is a, re, a reversal. It's more about a, a retreat because uh, some people have been very unhappy. So one cannot buy into the notion that the president misspoke. The president they knew what he was saying. He had a script, and the Secretary General of the ANC had the script. They could. Sifa, can you hear us? 
Okay, I, I think I would like to direct that question to you, Ethembe, and we're discussing situations of uh, that brought us to this situation here. That's the withdrawal of the ICC. And South Africa began proceedings to leave the ICC in 2016 after a dispute over whether to arrest the former Sudanese president, Omar al Bashir. In early December, we saw that the ANC had resolved to rescind the withdrawal from the ICC court. Uh, this were the discussions that were before what we were seeing, uh, what we saw yesterday when President Sir Maposa uh, made such an erroneous statement. I'll come back to you, uh, Sifa, but Thember, I don't know if you have your take on this. And Can you take us through some of the factors that led to the decision and why the withdrawal was considered in the first place? Well, you'll recall that uh, after the indictment of the then Kenyan president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, there were discussions and a resolution at the level of the AU that uh, severely criticized the ICC and urged African countries to reconsider their positions. Um, at that time, the president of the country was Jacob Zuma, and uh, the the ANC had a particular perspective, and that's why it took a resolution to pull out of the ICC and actually wrote to the IEC, ICC that it is withdrawing. And it was told that, you no, know, the process of withdrawal is going to take about a year, so your withdrawal is not going to be immediate. Then in 2017, the ANC went to a conference, and Cyril Ramaphosa was elected, and Almost all the policies that were pursued by the ANC before Ramaphosa were all reversed. And the decision to withdraw from the ICC was therefore frozen. So come 2022, the ANC goes to a conference. President Ramaphosa's position is enhancing the ANC. And a decision is taken to remain in the ICC, meaning reversal of the earlier decision. And then comes this arrest warrant for Putin, which then catches South Africa flat-footed uh, because it has just decided it's not withdrawing and it therefore has obligations uh, to arrest President Putin. And I think that is where now the debates and the confusion within the party emerges that, uh, yes, we're in the ICC, we can't withdraw in a couple of months, but at the same time, it's unrealistic to expect South Africa to arrest uh, President Putin. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Tembe. Uh, Sifo, are there reservations from some members of the ruling African National Congress on the resolution to rescind its withdrawal from the ICC? Does this position reflect the aspirations of most of its members? Are they all united on this matter of the International Criminal Court withdrawal? Yeah, I think uh, at this point in time, there seems to be unity of thought among what you may call the left-leaning members of the ANC, but also parties that are on the left. Uh, what you have is that uh, the, pres the president of the ANC and the ANC did not expect that uh, the matter of Putin on the BRICS will come so shortly. So they are, as uh, Temba says, they've been caught flat-footed. So what you have is simply confusion, because even as we speak, it is very unclear what the ANC government is going to do should Putin come here after he had been invited. Mm. So you, you, you have a, a government that is leaderless, that is directionless, and they are simply hoping that uh, somehow Putin can choose not to come. But the, as matters stand, uh, Ramaphosa is very clear that the ANC would remain within the ICC, and therefore all the obligations that affect members must be agreed to because uh, there might be reprisals in terms of economic sanctions. But uh, that is a more a decision that he's taking as a president of the ANC in government. But uh, on the ground, within the black parties, within the left-leaning members of the ANC, you have a different story. But it is also because the ANC has chosen for a long time not to address uh, this confusion within itself. The notion of uh, saying we are broad church creates problems. And it means that uh, the ANC cannot stand united on any position. 
Okay, thank you so much, Sifu. I'd like to bring in Tamba into the discussions. And uh, earlier on, you made situations or other positions about the time frame, even if South Africa wanted to pull out from the ICC. And uh, during its statement, it mentioned the fact that they are actually considering it, but that would be a last resort uh, to all of this. So what are the other options you think that South Africa uh, can take pending if they actually will eventually move out from the ICC? And if... They go on with this line of rescinding to withdraw from the ICC. What are the other options for South Africa? Well, I don't think well, they I have think... an option right now. I mean, they can. what we have is more talk. Because even if you notify ICC that you want to pull out, uh, that uh, would require time. It, uh, you, you remain a member of the ICC 12 months after notification. And for you to also... To move out, you must make sure that uh, you are consistent with the laws that uh, you have taken within Parliament, because uh, the the Rome Statute had been domesticated in South Africa. So what it will mean is that you'll have to go through parliamentary processes, which will not take even one year, which will take much more before you can actually withdraw. So they don't have a chance. What we have is uh, they've been caught flat-footed and they don't have an answer. They, you have the people who are just hoping that a, a miracle will happen. But anyway, South Africa is a country that has always believed in miracles. But unfortunately, in real politics, there are no miracles. Thank you. Now, Thembe, what where do we go from here? What happens when and if President Vladimir Putin sets foot on South African soil? I believe South Africa is obliged by law to effect an arrest. Uh, going by what has just happened, and I mean, knowing uh, the technicalities involved and withdrawing uh, from the International Criminal Court, uh, like uh, Sifo said, the country has been called flat footed. So, where do we go from here? What happens if Russian President Vladimir Putin decides to attend the BRICS summit? Well, I think in the first instance, the ICC indictment is clearly a, a geopolitical uh, measure than a purely legal me measure. And President Putin, I, I would imagine, would not want to be seen to be chickening out um, of coming to South Africa because it's being threatened by the West, if you look at what is happening in the world. And South Africa will be hopefully pray that for some reasons, uh, President Putin uh, should not set foot. Otherwise, um, it, even the government here is saying that uh, they are still in discussion on what it is that must happen. Uh, and uh, knowing the remnants of the apartheid uh, descendants in our country, if President Putin sets foot, they'll quickly run to court and uh, open a case and demand that South Africa should arrest Putin, just to really complicate matters for South Africa. So. Um, I, I really am not sure what legal mechanism uh, they are going to use, uh, you know, if, if, if President Putin comes to, to South Africa, which I believe he will, because if he doesn't come because South Africa is scared uh, to stand its ground, South Africa standing within BRICS is really going to take a serious, serious hammering. Now, is South Africa obliged to, I mean, you, they, you said the Rome status has been domesticated. So if they do not arrest President Vladimir Putin, will they be violating South African law? Well, indeed, you recall that in the case of uh, the Sudanese president, mm -hmm. there was a court ruling that said uh, South Africa should actually have arrested uh, the Sudanese president. And I mean, uh, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, um, a very embarrassing and confused situation right now, all because of the confusion that exists within the ANC uh, as a broad church, meaning it accommodates people from the left, right, center, and currently it is the right within the ANC, uh, the pro-West uh, within the ANC uh, that is in power. That is why if you look at our foreign policy position, if you look at our policy on, on, on energy, you realize that all of this is influenced from the West. So to take a position against the West, I think it's one of the most difficult things for President Ramaphosa to do.
Okay, thank you so much, Thembe. Now, Sifo, still looking at other options. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, condemnation of the ICC, talking about it being biased, uh, geopolitical sentiments, and all of that, which has uh, prompted South Africa to even consider the idea of withdrawing from the ICC. And there's what about the Malabo, uh, Malabo Protocol uh, that happened in 2014. And uh, this is a constitution for an African court of justice that a lot of people have been clamoring for. And in the statement from the South African presidency, it said that it plans to invigorate this protocol uh what or how do you think that south africa can actually you know move forward with this malabo protocol and uh, uh since 2014 that it has been um uh, uh, talked about what has been the process or progress concerning that well m from my perspective i think uh, what you are going to have is a lot of nonsense and what is coming from the south african government is simply that type of nonsense because they know that uh, between now and uh, the time that the BRICS summit uh, meets, all these processes that are suggesting are not going to bear fruit. So it is one way in which they are trying to duck and dive. So uh, for now, we should actually brace ourselves to one possibility that the President Putin may decide to come for the reason that says he should not be seen to be scared. And uh, as it happened with uh, uh, al Bashir, South Africa will not risk having to arrest him because uh, it will imply a lot of problems with regard to other BRICS uh, uh, partners and other uh, countries that want to join uh, uh, BRICS. So South Africa is simply praying for a miracle. They simply hope that uh, for some reason, the matter can be resolved by an act of God where somebody gets sick. But the, at the moment, they have no answer even as we speak. Now, um, Tebe, uh, looking at the, uh, still on the Malabo uh, protocol, do you think uh, an African courts of justice uh, will bring about, uh, you know, accountability for people that have committed crimes on the African continent? Or is just an ex another extension of the African Union, which uh, some have described as an old boys club, but always looking after uh, members' interest and all back with no bite. Yeah, well, one you know, of the concerns in, that people in, have in, had with the... So, sorry, Sifo, uh, uh, that question is directed to... There's nothing wrong Bay, in us having, solving our own problems as Africans. And the idea of having our own court uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, we we can't uh, allow we can't outsource that responsibility. The issue is whether we have the political will. As you rightfully indicate, that uh, the fear that people have had is that uh, you are going to be dealing with uh, people who you expect people who are conflicted mm. to be making those decisions. So the issue is uh, we need to deal with that aspect. Whether we'll have the political will, whether we'll bring the elders who are going to be supervising this process. But as matters stand, most people have subscribed to the ICC precisely because they fear that those who are implicated might belong to the same boys uh, club that would make sure that the justice is not, uh, does not prevail. But the, the idea of outsourcing that responsibility to other, other people cannot sustain. Africans must be ashamed of themselves. But as we've also seen, that the double standards are, are very clear. We cannot ignore that. Mm. But the, the point is, when you have a, a leadership that does not have a backbone, that does not have integrity, that wants to please everybody, this was bound to happen. It was simply a self. It is simply a self-created crisis. And tell me, what about you? Uh, what exactly do you feel is the level of support? I mean, aside South Africa, which is talking about this Malabo court, uh, for all the AU members said, what sort of support do they have towards this Africa Court of Justice and Human Rights? And what sort of level of uh, condemnation do they have against the ICC? Let's look at two of them together. Well, look, I, I think the, uh, the Malabo protocol, it's, it's some way you know, in the background, because even South Africa is dusting it off now in the context of its quagmire with the ICC. Otherwise, without the ICC uh, crisis, they will not even have bothered. They, they haven't bothered anyway 
to say a word about it. Mm. So it is more of a panic reaction than a, an honest and genuine commitment uh, to push for it. And uh, as an African, as a Pan-Africanist, I sincerely would want to see us being able. And I think uh, the current changes in the world and the encouraging words from the Russians that uh, Africans must be encouraged to find African solutions to African problems, improving capacity, building capacity, we should actually propel us in that direction that uh, when we have challenges and issues, we must be able to, you know, to deal with them. Except that, just to add this uh, dimension, if you look at America and Europe, they commit atrocities in other countries, whereas in Africa, our leaders commit atrocities within their own countries. And it, it therefore creates a conflict for them to be motivated enough to set up a court that uh, would have the powers uh, to at some point prosecute some of them. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Thebe. Now, before we uh, wrap up our conversation, uh, going forward, uh, do you feel South Africa, this debate might still uh, come up later, or have we seen the end of it the, with South Africa uh, in regards to its membership of the International Criminal Court? Well, I think... Uh... Go ahead, please. The way the towards uh, withdrawing is much stronger because remaining has created the number of problems and it's going to continue to create problems for South, for South Africa until South Africa is clear. Because what you have with South Africa is that uh, it was so obsessed with the notion of being seen to be a good, uh, good boy that they were signing everything without uh, looking at the fine print. Right now, it's time for South Africa to look at the fine print and what that means. But also for the ruling party, it must resolve its own internal contradiction, contradictions. So I don't see this as ending now. I see this ending up also in the courts. But uh, as I indicate that uh, it is uh, the number of parties on the left uh, of the view that uh, this inconsistency in application of international law cannot be sustained and South Africa cannot be part of a, an unequal treatment where we are seen as junior partners and as a, a people that are targeted. But Africans must have a serious discussion about what to do with atrocities that are, are, are perpetrated in their own countries and between the, among the countries. All right, thank you so much, Sifo. A lot of discussions, I mean, for South Africa, back and forth within the ICC withdrawal, but we need to see how things pan out. And especially, I hope that there'll be no more communication error from the presidency. Thank you so much, Sifo, uh, for joining us, and also Temba Godi for joining us on this conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.